Russell, I'd first like to ask you, how did you get involved in Body of Lies and what was it about the script that wanted you to be in it? Um, well, because it was a phone call from, from Ridley, I sort of decided a few years ago that when Ridley calls, I'll, I'll just say yes and then I'll work out why I want to do the film later on. Because I know he's not going to come to me with something uh, mundane. It's always going to have a certain level of interest. So I, I'd said yes before I'd read the book or, or the script um, based on the description that he gave me of the character and um, how he saw the character physically. Um, so uh, he'd said to me that um, the key thing for him is that, that he wanted the character to appear like an ex-football player whose knees are, were shot and that you could still see a certain physical grace. And um, that physical grace would lead to his feminine side and the feminine side is illustrated by the fact he's a great multitasker. Um, it's also interesting how really, really doesn't make a political statement here. This is a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, how do you see this film in the world we live in now, even though it's fiction? Well, Ridley creates worlds for the audience, you know. And uh, in this particular film, the audience steps into the world of espionage, steps into the world of, of spies, where lying is, is the currency of the day. I think um, there's enough information in this film to promote a secondary discussion. But like you say, there's no agenda coming through the door. This is your, your fourth time with Ridley. Um, what is he like as a director? I know he doesn't waste time, he goes straight to the point, but I'd like to... It's not just the, the efficiency aspect, you know. Um, I mean, his, his reputation with, with some people is kind of intimidating because he has that technocrat kind of uh, reputation and, and, and some people uh, um, maybe would see that as all he is, you know, as a technician. But the, the reality is that you, you're getting to work with Titian or Raphael, you know. He, he's a visual artist of, of the highest level and film just happens to be his medium. So he can be operating five different camera crews at the same time and as he sees the frame, he creates. So. You know, he's not afraid to throw a little bit of red in there or something. He, he really does operate the, the, the monitors like he's, he's painting a canvas. You made a film with Leo in 95, I believe. 93 we made 93. Um, how did, how does he, has he changed, if he has, in any way? How do you see him? Uh, he's taller and uh, he's, uh, he's a lot more mature than he was when he was 17 or 18. Um, I'm not. Uh, I've gotten shorter and less mature uh, in that same time period. Um, the key, the cool thing with, with uh, Leonardo is the fact that he hasn't really changed. You know, he was a guy who was connected to his environment, and um, he was emotionally available and laughed really easily. And he's still that same person. You know, so it was really easy for us. Speaking of cool, cool character in the film, I think is the head of the Jordanian intelligence. I, th I think Mark Strong does a great delivery there. What do you think? Oh yeah, I only got to do the one scene with Mark, but that was a lot of fun. Everything is a lie then in this spy world. You can't. They're all lying by to necessity. Each other. By necessity, you know. There's actually a, a moment in the film where, where that character you're talking about, played by Mark Strong says to Leo, you know, whatever you do, just don't lie to me. And when Leo agrees to that, he, he already knows that he's been lied to because it's not possible for people in this situation to be completely truthful because that's dangerous.